Upstairs in the castle, Davy Crockett, his sidekick Georgie, and Mike, king of the river, come inside from a hard day's work out on the river. Time to take off those wet clothes, relax on those pelts and furs, and sing the ballad of Davy Crockett. Before things get weird upstairs, let's go down into the dungeons. Let's go beneath the castle. Hi, my name's Michael. I'm Rob. And I'm Damien. This podcast is all about Disney. Or is it just an elaborate plan to get my cousin and friend to forcibly watch terrible movies each week? Is this just a podcast for me to get pleasure from their pain? I guess we'll never know. (laughs) Anyway, each week we look at a different decade and choose a movie from that decade. This week we are looking at a movie from the 1950s. The 1950s was a decade marked by the post-World uh, War II boom, the dawn of the Cold War, and the civil rights movement in the United States. But most importantly, there was a little movie called Davy Crockett and the River Pirates. Damien, what is the plot synopsis? Davy Crockett and the River Pirates is an edited and rate cut compilation of the last two episodes of the Davy Crockett miniseries. The film starts off with Gilbert Race, which sees Davy's best friend Georgie challenging Mike Fink, King of the River, to a race to New Orleans, and ends with River Pirates, in which the indigenous American tribe of the area tasks Davy and Georgie with uncovering who has been plundering boats on the river under the guise of native of the indigenous Americans. <laughs> cool. And what is your history with Davy Crockett and the River Pirates, Damien? Never heard of it or the miniseries before. Uh, so, yeah, something new to watch. Mm-hmm. And yourself, Rob? This is, your, this is one of your favorite movies of all time, I believe. Oh, my God, yes. I love that movie. It is the greatest movie of all time. Um, so I have absolutely no history of it. I've never heard of it up until we drew that name last week. And I thought it was going to be a completely different movie. Yeah. Well, yeah, you thought, you thought there was going to be actual white pirates like uh, yes. Pirates of Car- Caribbean. Like yes, correct. Was going to rock up. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Sparrow. <laughs> yes, I was praying for Jack Sparrow. <laughs> yeah, well, my history is I, I've i never seen these movies. Um, I kind of know David Crockett by name, I guess. Uh, I kind of know the song as well, the David that that's the Davy Crockett uh, ballad of Davy Crockett. I've, Do you want to give heard... us a little bit of a preview about just... what the song is, Michael? Break out uh, into song. But da- Damien's pretty good at at singing, I believe. See, unfortunately, we are not Disney Disney, and therefore we don't do musical numbers in our show. <laughs> <laughs> we save that for the professionals. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We might get hit with our copyright as well if we start singing Disney songs. <laughs> we might just get a lot of hate. <laughs> so yeah, it's basically all, all I knew of it. Uh and uh so yeah, not not much of a history. Uh but what uh Rob, what is the history of Davy Crockett and the River Pirates? Okay, so like um so what it okay, so Davy Crockett and the River Pirates, like Damien said, it's um it's a compilation of the last two episodes. Um, of the five-episode miniseries um, produced by Walt Disney. So the reason why Walt Disney did this, um, so it was so he produced weekly one-hour television programs for ABC as a part of a deal that allowed him to build the Disneyland theme park. So Disney, um, so Walt Walt Disney um, wished to highlight historical figures, and his company developed three episodes on Crockett. Davy Crockett, Indian fighter. Davy Crockett goes to Congress, and Davy Crockett um, at the Alamo. Um, so, according to historians Randy Roberts and James Olson, by the end of the three shows, the actor who played Davy Crockett, Fess Parker, would be very well known. The power of television will be fully recognized, and Davy Crockett will be the most famous frontiersman in American history. Um, so the and also um, so where is it? 
Um, so the show also sparked debate with many questioning whether Crockett was really deserving of the amount of attention that he was receiving. Letter writers also questioned the series' historical accuracy. Nevertheless, the show proved very popular, so he, Walt Disney was able to fund the Disneyland theme park. Um, so um, so um, the actor who played Davy Crockett and his buddy and his co-star buddy Ebsen toured the United States, Europe, and Japan. By the end of 1955, I could not believe this. Um, Americans have purchased over $300 million worth of Davy Crockett merchandise, which equates to about $2 billion in 2001. And also, wow. yeah, I know. It was, as soon as I read that, I was like, that was crazy that they people love, actually love this. They love Davy Crockett. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, also, but um, also in 2002, um, under their Touchstone Pictures label, Disney, um, Disney revisited the subject of Davy Crockett and the Alamo with the film The Alamo. The film, however, was a box office failure. And that's about it for the history of Davy Crockett and the River Pirates. Cool. Very interesting. I, I do know at the start of the film, they mentioned, I don't know if this was in the original miniseries, but the start of the film, they mentioned that uh, there are a bunch of stories out there about David Crockett, the legend of David Crockett, and then mm. there's the ones that weren't true. Like they explicitly say these are the non-true stories of David Crockett. This um, happened. <laughs> if this was something they did in the original miniseries or not, though. Mm. I I was sort of unaware that this was even based on uh, real stories or a real person. Yeah, you, I I honestly had no idea either. I only learned that when I put Davy Crockett into Google and I didn't put the real part to the end because I couldn't remember which one we were watching. Yeah, right. I learned that Davy Crockett was a real person, an American folklore hero. Yeah. And he, you, you, ta- you were telling me earlier, Damien, about what he actually did. Yeah, he, um, he helped fight with uh, Texas to get free from Mexican control. Um, so he was at Alamo fighting, which is the major fight for Texan freedom. Mm. Uh, so he actually predates... Texas joining the United States. All right. Well, I guess it's uh, it's time to get into the movie itself, and let's dissect this one. Uh, once upon a time, there was a movie called Davy Crockett and the River Pirates. All right. Well, we start off with the the credits, I guess, and and you know, starts off with this this song that's quite good, I think, and I think a lot of, a lot of the songs in this are pretty consistent pretty fairly you know good for its time hmm. um it's the, like just power like, of ballads i guess but yeah. they're good like they're, they're all good i enjoyed all of them yeah sort of upbeat uh and kind of i had an urge to go horse riding through the bush did you yeah <laughs> so <weird. laughs> Well, this starts with uh, Davy and, and Georgie uh, sort of talking about some stuff together in the in the, the wilderness, and uh, uh, then they're just sort of chilling out. Um, Georgie's having some tea, and then we see some stock footage of a squirrel, and then he drops his nuts into Georgie's tea. Uh, I, I don't remember that bit, uh, Damien. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, yeah, squirrel attack, win. I mean, have you ever had a, a squirrel drop his nuts into your tea? I mean, I've never seen a squirrel in nature. So again, different countries. So, <laughs> and then not only not only that, <laughs> and then when they go to bed, um, a skunk crawls into bed with Georgie. <laughs> I loved Davy's response was to kiss it good night and go to sleep. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> Like, I don't care. Just go to sleep. I'm tired. I just want to sleep. At this point in the movie, were you guys sort of worried about the, the next hour and a half of this? <laughs> that 100% opening, I was worried. That. That's like what? the weakest part, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very much... Because uh, I guess we're coming into this not knowing these characters... So this was a very sort of strange way to introduce them. And it was a bit of a head scratcher, really. 
because we have we do we mention this is sorry we haven't seen the first three episodes we've only ever seen these two episodes so we have no context to anything that may have been pre-established in the first uh, film or the miniseries yeah that's right yeah we we chose to watch the second one first well we didn't choose to but (laughs) what's happened (laughs) we are not watching the first one what disney gods will decide that that is very true well so after all this we sort of actually get into the story of what what this is going to be about and this is where they sort of meet um mike fink the, the king of the river and I mean, as soon as this guy enters the the scene, this movie lights up like a Christmas tree. I'm 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 a I'm a Mike Fink fan. What can I say? <laughs> I could do a spin-off on Mike Fink and I'd happily watch it. Um so basically, um he, so he he um Davy Croc Davy and Georgie want to go down the the river, and Mike is going to ch- wants to charge him. Is is sort of what's happening, and so then they get into sort of a a a race. Is that what happened? <laughs> yeah. So uh, Mike wanted to charge them a thousand dollars, which is with inflation twenty two thousand US or thirty thousand Australian as of today's currency. Uh, the Australian one is weird because we don't have currency dating that far back. So mm. uh, it's based off 1910 inflation pricing. Um, and then Mike gets Georgie drunk on his Mike special. And What's in the Mike special? I don't, we don't know. All we know is it has smoke coming out of it. I want to try the Mike special. Smoke. You can try uh, Mike special. And then no. it, I'll make I'll make it for you next time you come over. Oh no! I'm serious. Yeah, you want one okay. today? Yeah, I'll try your mic special. Excellent. Um, yeah, and then it cuts to um, Davy going into the the tavern or saloon or whatever it is, um, and Georgie's hanging literally on the chandelier, rolling it. <laughs> and like, hey, your boss got super drunk and made a bet with us for like your furs against my booze. Mm. Um, or whoever's the first in New Orleans. That was great. Hold up today, completely illegal today. <laughs> into a contractual agreement while intoxicated. <laughs> like, yeah, that's how you got business done. <laughs> it's the 18th, uh, 1810, so, you know, things were a bit different back then. A bit more lawless. Yeah. This is, um, this is where you were introduced to Mike's sidekick as well. Uh, he he was quite a good character um, on the on the boat. There was him and there was the other guy on the boat. They were a, a, a bit of a doofus guy um, on the bad guy's boat, I guess you could say. It kind of reminded me of Pirates of the Caribbean. It did. Because you've got the same thing where you've got um, Barbosa and then you've got the, I forget the name, it's One-Eyed Dude and his other shipmate. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. It's a similar idea to that, where you've got like the sort of the muscle guy and the dumb guy. Well, this is where they sort of, uh, I guess now they're they're sort of taking off. Um, uh, well, first they they need to find a ship, find a boat, and then they come across this old guy and his boat. And this guy is the oldest guy I've ever seen in my life. He he looked like he had already died, like. Five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually a spirit that possesses that boat. <laughs> I was like, this guy's one, or he, he this guy's a zombie. He, he sounds <laughs> ancient too when he talks. I, hey, I couldn't understand anything he said. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to tell you why, Michael? Why is that? Because you don't have subtitles on. Well, uh, <laughs> and did you understand, what was he saying then? You tell me. I can't remember. <laughs> I tell you, I, I, to be honest, I got this part of the movie and I hadn't understood half of the things anyone had been saying. <laughs> I mean, I was 
said. His uh, crew left him because of uh, issues with the Native Americans down the river. Mm-hmm. Um, and now he has no crew. And if they find a crew, they can go. And then the legendary David Crockett says he's looking for a crew, then everyone would be wanting to sail with them. <laughs> was it in Tortuga getting a crew? I don't even know where they were. I mean, they, they say where they are, but they're in America somewhere. Mm. We have the coast down the coast Ohio I think so basically Davey has to go get six crewmates uh which we he does pretty fairly easy easily we didn't even see him do it (laughs) Uh, he kind of gets a couple of them and then he goes okay now you guys get more (laughs) and they get and they go off and get the others so um also Georgie tried to poach uh one of the uh king of the rivers men so Yes. Yeah, the second in command guy. Um, so basically, they got their boats. Um, Mike's got his, Davey's got his boat, and they're going to race to see who gets to the. Where are they going? <laughs> New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah, so whoever gets their first wins. And uh, this is where the adventure begins. Um, and this is sort of. Uh, there's a good song here where Mike starts singing and the, the sidekick is, is on the little uh, banjo or whatever instrument it was. It was a banjo. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I really like this song, actually. This song? <laughs> it was good. I did enjoy this song. Yeah. Me and Mike say, I think the thing we love the most about Mike is yeah. how animated he is. Hey. He is... I love Mike too. Mike was my favorite character in that movie. I, well, you yeah. haven't said you liked Mike. Not as much as yeah. me. And, and, uh, we might have mentioned this to each other beforehand, but we are fans of Mike. So Mike likes Mike, and that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's just so um, animated and so like, lively and so energetic. Uh, yeah, he, he's, very, like, he's almost a cartoon character, this guy. He's great. And I, I was thinking, if he was a cartoon character, he would be Pete. Yes. Pe- Peg Leg Pete. Yeah. Yes. For Just sure. thought that he said that. Yeah. He's he's 100% Pete. It's it might great. have been the inspiration for it, maybe. Hey? It might have been the inspiration for it. You mean um, Steamboat Willie? Yeah. God, yes! <laughs> that's the feeling I get when I'm look, watching it. I feel like a Steamboat Willie. Like yeah. That style of slapstick humor and that style of like over exaggeration. I think they they told him to watch Steamboat Willie, and they're like, "See that guy, Pete? You that's who you are. Be him. Be him." <laughs> so anyway. it is Jeff York, who is known from the magical world of uh, what of Disney, the great locomotive, the great locomotive chase, Westwood Ho, the wagons. David Crockett, Johnny Tremaine, Old Yeller, Zorro, and Savage Sam. Cool. That's his Disney photography. That's great. Also, well, if we got that Zorro movie last week, we would have seen the actor again. Well, we're going to have more of him in the future, which is, is excellent. Anyway, let's continue on this uh, story <laughs> that's happening. Um, so, uh, so they're sailing down. Um, one of them puts a... Have you ever seen... I just want to quickly sidetrack again. This boat system they've got, where they've got the the sticks, the four, they got big four big sticks stick into the the water. I assume they're hitting the ground and they sort of row that way. Yeah. Have we? Have you ever seen this style before? Never. It looked like it's so impractical. <laughs> I think it's intended for sort of like the shallow rivers and stuff where they have to occasionally like physically move the boat. Right. Um, so so like, a, pont- like a pontoon kind of boat where it's designed to like go through shallow rivers and stuff. Okay. Well, they, uh, the Mike's boat, they put a barrel in the, in the water and the, the barrel says to use the Abbott, Abbott ch- channel, which is the wrong one. So then they end up going through there and 
and it's a bit of a bit of a struggle. But you know, because Davy Crockett's, you know, he's a legend. Yeah, you get it's not a problem for him. And they sort of catch up to Mike again. Is this where we come across the Native Americans? The the first time we sort of come across them, who aren't actually Native Americans, are actually uh, white. These bad guys, these white bad guys, who are dressing up as Native Americans and uh, t- attacking boats. So, is this the first time we we sort of see them? In this movie, yes, but they m- might have appeared in the previous episodes. Yeah, it feels like there might have been a pre-established connection there, because he does say later on that he that that Davy and Georgie are friends of the natives. Um, so that might have been established in an earlier episode. I don't think anything else really happens in the water. Oh, they come they come across they come to an island where there's another old guy who has a whole bunch of animals. And this is where they all they all they all help him. They run they run off like Davy jumps off the boat and he, he dive tackles a pig. Do you this scene surprised me because I was expecting there to be like a five minute animal chasing scene. No, um, which is what didn't always end up happening. But it was like maybe half a minute. Yeah, well, good because I don't want to see him like wrestling this pig any longer. That pig, that pig was freaking out. Yeah, that that pig didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I don't think the animals knew what was going on. I'm pretty sure they just were like pigs chase. <laughs> yeah, so but they they help Batman and his animals. I do uh, have a question though, uh, which one might know. How much of this was shot? In the what in like real life, and how much was green screened? Because there is a scene none of it was green screened. Rapids where it feels like that was green screened heavily. Oh, okay, yeah. So the rapids were green screened, but ma- majority of the movie was actually filmed on location. Like well, look anything, at that. tell. Sorry, you can tell with that scene because like the water coming from just one side and like that face yes. the rock is past. Like it, just, it kind of feels outdated. Yeah, like some of that, like, but majority of the film was actually shot on location. So I guess they're sort of racing to the finishing line. And uh, then this is where they start uh, fighting each other and, and poking each other with their sticks, knocking each other into the water. Yeah. Yep. Good old uh, stick fight. Good old stick fight. Good old gladiator fight, that's what it is. Yeah. I love how it was falling in the water is what took most of them out of the fight. Like, once they're in the water, it's like, we're done, we can't fight anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so they, they sort of still race into the finishing line, and uh, our hero of the movie gets in there, and they win. And happy ending. <laughs> For for David Crockett, well, not actually, not really a happy ending because this is halfway through the movie. Yeah. <laughs> happy ending for the episode that existed originally. Yes. Um. So I there's also a scene in a bar. I can't remember where this is even in this movie, but where um Mike like shoots behind his back, and so mid boat race they stop okay. off. Uh, Mike stopped off at a tavern. Um, mm. Prior to that, Mike had sabotaged Davy's boat so that the rudder fell off. Ah, oh, yes. Mm. Yeah. And so they stopped at the tavern. And so while the old guy was getting the boat fixed, they were in the tavern distracting uh, Mike. And so to do that, they challenged Mike to basically, like, they challenged his shooting ability. Yeah. Well, th- this so is halfway, halfway through the race, towards the end of the race, it was, like the last major stop. I, I like that because they made Mike not be a complete, like, useless doofus that you you would assume that would make the, the sort of... He's technically the bad guy at the start of this movie. But he actually shoots back, hits the thing, and actually hits his hat, which I would... Yeah. Davey cheated when he did his trick shot. Davey, yeah. He, Davey's a dirty cheat. <laughs> Davey's the real bad guy of the movie. He is. He's yeah. the villain of the piece. <laughs> Mike just sell up and down the river. That's his Mike, river. That's all he does. 
Mike just wants to, yeah, just be a boatman, go up and down, and, and then the Davy comes along and wants to ruin everything. I do want to say another good thing I liked about Mike was at the end of that segment, the episode, Mike literally eats his hat. He yes. said he would do it, and he does it. He does. Yeah. He eats his hat. He's uh, a man of his word. Exactly. Like, I like, like Mike's got honor, man. He's he's an honorable man. He never said nothing about no cheating on a river race. <laughs> That's why we're in the the Mike camp. <laughs> also, I love the uh, the golden hand cannon that he's given by Davy. Okay. I don't know where the hell Davy got a golden hand cannon from. Yeah. Uh, that's something you just whip out of your uh, backpack, but. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's so they also give um they give Mike a brand new hat. Um, cause they, after this race, um, they all become friends, don't they? Yes, they which, do. Which is great. And gives them the hat, gives them the cannon, and they're like, see ya, Mike, see you later. We'll never see you again, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> One minute later. <laughs> so this, this is where, this is basically the, the end of the first episode. And now we're going into the second episode of, of the, the miniseries. We'll say that the cut is good because it goes from they're singing the song at the end of the first one, which bleeds into the second one. Yeah, like completely. So they either re-recorded or did a lot of like computer magic to make that connect between the two of them. No, so <laughs> so so what, what's happening now, Damien? The, the, so the in the, the they're not the American Native Americans are <laughs> supposedly. <laughs> attacking people but it's not them it's white people pretending yeah and because of that the native american tribes are planning to go to war with the white people yes so davy talks to one of the chiefs who kidnapped him yes and he's like we're fr- i'm friends with your your people um your people your people <laughs> I don't, I don't know what to say here. I really don't. This is, this is a minefield. How do I it is. any of this? Damien, you take over. <laughs> so Crockett explains to the chief of the tribe that him and his friend Georgie are friends to the Native Americans and that they don't want this war to happen. So they will go out and try and find who is pretending to be the Native Americans of the area. And find out if it is a Native American tribe or someone else doing it. So this is this is where we go back to Mike. Uh, you know how I was so I was so upset because I was like, this rest of this movie is going to be terrible because <laughs> Mike is gone. They've said goodbye to him. He's not coming back. And then he's back, and I'm like, yes. So we're here to watch Mike in the River Bandits, uh, River Pirates, not yeah. David Cockett. Yeah, Pirates. exactly. He should have had a spinoff. <laughs> well they they so they dress him as up as this banker which is quite funny and they are going to try to get robbed what are you laughing at damien I, the bar scene i love that scene where they're at the bar and they're talking about mike yeah and he, he's like he's so angry he literally rips the tabletop up <laughs> He flips, he flips the he table. Flips the table. He actually flips the table. He does what we say we're going to do every time we play a game. <laughs> yeah. He actually go. He actually does it. Yeah, I love that. It's great. Yeah, that that seems really good. Um, and then so then they pick up a dodgy music man in this in this bar who was listening to their conversation because they're there to um find the the. The person or, or people who are read the rumor of the they have on board. Yeah. So this guy takes the bait and he uh, goes onto the boat with him. And he and then he's like, "Oh, let me just sing a song." <laughs> and then <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like singing. He's like, "These guys have lots of gold, lots of gold on this boat." <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's something like that. <laughs> so smart, too. Like I knew as soon as they picked him up, I'm like, I bet you this guy is a fun, and he's probably how they're figuring out who to roll. Yeah, 
definitely. So, <laughs> so he sent out the signal to the other guys who hear the the music, and they they go to the boss and like, all right, get your gear on. We're going to go rob this this boat, take all their gold. And then the music man he finds out that it's uh, it's a trap, and it's it's, da- it's Davy Crockett, and then he tries to sing another song. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's, da- it's Davy Crockett on the boat. And he's like, and they shut him up. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. <laughs> Tie, him Tie him up. up in the bottom of the boat. Yeah. And that, that crafty, crafty dude is like drilling a hole into the boat as well. And he's drilling Did a he hole. Draw- in- I, I missed what happened there. Yeah. He, oh, he- just, there was a cork in the boat. Like, uh, they used like, um, to swamp boats, they don't sail away. Yeah, no. It's like I never saw that part. Here. No, no. Fog came out. And the that music, was water to the boat. The music man was downstairs. He was pretending to be asleep, and they checked on him, and then they went up, and then he was like, "Oh, they're gone." And then he was like, "Got a one of those, what's those uh, drill things with the?" And he's like screwing <laughs> the twisted drills. Yeah, and he put a hole in the boat, and then he got a cork and he put it in the in the boat with the, with the string. Oh, okay. Because that's when so I guess they they seek the boats while they're getting robbed, uh, while they're attacking. So, yeah. So that's. Uh, I just moving to make one they can attack the boat, but it was tied up. So yeah, he started drowning. <laughs> so he's what well, accidentally comes out while he's down there, and it starts filling up. And I bet at that point, that music man is regretting that decision he made. <laughs> He's like, this has not gone well. <laughs> How does no one on the boat not notice that the boat's flooded before that Mike tells the guy to go downstairs to get his uh, cannon? Yeah. You would think. You would think that they would notice, but apparently they couldn't. No, no. So the guy going downstairs, coming back up, and the boat has, like, completely almost sunk. <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, so this is where we get our action scene. So the, the Indian, the Native American Indians are attacking, <laughs> are attacking them, and uh, but they're not that they're not they're white people. Let me just say the white. What am I going to say? The white people. The, the other white people are attacking them. Fine. Just the Americans. Dave, uh, Davey and Georgie. They follow a couple of the bad guys to the cave. And this is where the this is the bad guys' cave where they're. All their loot's been hidden. Mm, all their loot. So they are, um, the bad guys are sort of hiding out in the cave and they're like sort of wandering around, looking around. And then another fight happens. So they're like sort of fighting each other again. And <laughs> In that fight, there's the scene when the dude falls over next to the barrel of gunpowder. Yeah. And fire and it goes boom. Don't think he survived that. <laughs> no. Just if I check when gunpowder goes boom, everything around it goes boom. But I'm pretty sure we see him again afterwards covered in gunpowder soot. Like yes. it's a little up. But it's like that would never have happened. Well he's and, like Yo, you're painting the walls. Well, this movie's like like a cartoon, isn't it? So it's cartoon rules. He's Wile E. Coyote. <laughs> and they're all like, words on her. Yeah. Like shoot, and all three people in the boat like dominate out of the boat. Yeah. Also, back to a moment, uh, June. I think that fight. There is a scene where one of the guys does he goes to fall off the boat, and he does like a spin, and then like a backflip into the water. Yeah. And it looks pretty much like a predetermined, predesigned dance form. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it looks like he's probably done that exact shot multiple times, like, for that movie. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that guy, that that guy just likes to do backflips when he's spare time. Very so uh, theatrical with his uh, drowning performances. Yeah. If you're going to drown, you want to go out with a bit of class. Yeah, a little bit there. <laughs> I mean, put on a good show right before you drown. I mean, I'm not going to forget. I'm not going to forget him now. That's for sure. Exactly. <laughs> what are you just going to flop into the water when you drown? <laughs> no way. 
It's not even worth being an actor if you're not going to put all into it. <laughs> Life can't not be anything if you put your all into everything. Exactly. So how how do they defeat these? What do they do to defeat these bad guys in this cave? They just overpower them. Yeah. <laughs> One guy spends half the battle under a table. <laughs> He's only ever hit by people on his team as well. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, well, they. Yeah. So I guess they defeat they defeat the uh, the bad guys and and um, everyone's happy again. And they thank Mike once again for his his assistance and they're like all right we'll never see you again mike not until next episode <laughs> oh wait so, there are new episodes yeah uh, but if there were i'm sure he would have been back um yeah anything think, else in this story that we've missed or i think because that's basically it <clears throat> not that i can think of oh there was <laughs> I, I do want to mention i just remembered it uh, a scene from the first half with the old guy um mm. when after Mike broke the rudder, and he sneezes himself off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I lost it at that part. I did not stop laughing at that part. That's what I yeah. meant to mention earlier. Yeah. He sneezed so loud, he, he sneezed so hard, he broke the rudder and yeah. fell into the water. Yeah, no, this is definitely Disney trying to, like, live action a Disney cartoon. Yeah. That, that is something straight out of a Disney cartoon. Reminds me of when uh, Pop used to sneeze. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He used to uh, off, yeah. hear it through the whole house. <laughs> if he was yeah, in the whole house. If he was outside in the garage, you were hearing. I could hear him from my house when he would sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that's about it. And uh, they all lived happily ever after. And now it's time to rate this movie. How many dwarfs do we give this movie out of seven? Um, Damien. <laughs> I will give it five dwarfs out of seven. Really? I will probably never watch it again. <laughs> Mm. But I enjoyed it. I was not expecting to, but I enjoyed it. Uh, then I'm going to give it a six. I'm going to give it a six then. Uh, I'm going to give it a six. You're going to give this movie a six? Yes. You're a stain. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I um, If there were more like new ones to watch, I'd probably watch them. But I probably wouldn't go out of my way to rewatch what I've already watched. You know this is out of seven, right? Yeah. <laughs> Six. Six out of seven? Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah, oh, it's good. I'm I'm glad. Um, now, Rob, what are you going to give it? <laughs> you give it the six? <laughs> I'm going to give out of, out of seven. If I could give it a zero, I would. But because of my think, I'm giving it a one. Oh. Wait, so Only see, because I like my think. You did not enjoy it at all. I did not enjoy it at all. The only things, the only thing that I liked was my think. So that's why I'm giving it a one. So I enjoyed my think. I feel like that would be more just a one. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. It's just getting a one. Um, anyway, Michael, so what? how many dwarves do you give it? I'm I'm like I'm in between two numbers here. <laughs> I would say you're in between two and three. I I liked Mike. He's good. The songs I liked. Um, there's some stuff I liked in it. Uh, overall, is it really a great movie? Did I enjoy it? Uh, I probably enjoyed talking about it more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> than watching it. Um, I. Oh, I'll give it a four. <laughs> give it a four. Okay. I'll go in. Can I change my dwarf? I'm not giving it one. I think one is too much of a, like, too bad review. Like, it <laughs> still had some redeeming qualities. I'll give it a three. 
Oh. I will respectfully remove mine down to a five. What are we doing here? <laughs> no, 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 no. You originally said five. I'm going to stay yeah. with my five. We're all over the place. Yes, you're, we are. But you've got I'm up. sticking now, with my three. <laughs> Damien, I, I was around when you were watching this movie. And I could hear you laughing. Yeah, I like I like it. <laughs> I like, yeah. yeah. like slapstick comedy. You are cracking up. I love slapstick humour. <laughs> I'm watching stuff like that, so. Well, it's up on Disney Plus if anyone else wants to go check it out. Um, and I actually, um, I'm looking forward to seeing the first one at some point in the future. <laughs> Don't know when. Well, now it's uh, time to get out of the 50s and we're going to get into the 60s for next week. And uh, time to find out what our movie's going to be. I've got them all in here. I saw my pepper nose earlier. <laughs> Here's something he prepared earlier. We got a lot. Look, um, I'm gonna. We we don't have a, a big selection of movies that we actually know. <laughs> oh. There's probably uh, we got 101 Dalmatians in here, the Sword of the Sword in the Stone, Mary Poppins, yes, the Jungle Book, and so they didn't really make a lot of animation uh, in this decade. And we are not going to get any of those movies you just mentioned. You never know. This isn't fair that every week. <laughs> it's my fault that we get these movies. Yeah. I really, I really think I should go give this to someone else. Wait there one second. You talk between each other and I'll... Yeah. Okay. Space. I'll be back. Which movie are you hoping for? Um, I'll say to Mike, like, there's a couple I wouldn't mind. Um, I think... The original, uh, what's it called? Um, my brain hurts. <laughs> 101 Dalmatians? Oh, I hear a noise coming from yonder. I wonder what that could be. Wait, is someone at your place? Oh, I didn't realize I locked it. <gasps> oh, hi. What is this heresy magic? How are you here in my camera? I believe in this in your face. Whatever happens, it's on you. Heavenly ball of destiny. <laughs> oh my god, Damien has the ball of destiny. Damien, start ruffling it around. Get it all mixed up so we can get ready to call out the names. Yeah, I think the parent trap's in here. Mary Poppins is in here. Yeah, I know. So the... um, if we get Mary Poppins, I'll be very happy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are you looking forward to? Hopefully, getting me or Michael. Both of you. I'm looking forward to getting 101 Dalmatians. Hopefully, we get 101 Dalmatians. Maybe the Sword in the Stone. Um, the Love Bug. I haven't watched that for years. That would be interesting to watch. Yeah. Okay. Now, who's? Um, I'll read out the first one. Mike, Damien, show the show us the first one. Damien, I can't, I can't Damien, Damien read, it. read it out. <laughs> Damien, you, you just read all three. Monkeys go home, February eighth, nineteen sixty-seven. Monkeys go home. Okay. <laughs> What's the next one, Damien? We can't read them. Is ten who dead, November first, nineteen sixty. And the last option is. The Absent-Minded Professor, March 16th, 1961. I, so what, so Go Home Monkeys? So it was <laughs> Monkeys Go Home, 10 Who Dead, The Absent-Minded Professor. I, I, my vote is for The Absent-Minded Professor. My vote is for Monkeys Go Home. Mine Ooh. is for The Absent-Minded Professor. We have a winner. <laughs> Next week, it's going to be the absent-minded professor. Yay. So the torture continues for Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's next week, but let's uh, find out now how Disney are you. And today, uh, Damien is going to be asking myself and Rob the questions. Yes, he is. Oh, how Disney are you guys? So I like to think I'm fairly Disney. Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? Mm-hmm. 
at question one. Pixar began in 1979 as part of Lucasfilm's computer division, before splitting off into its own corporation in 86. Who provided the funding to make this endeavor possible? Um, the micro. Yep. Mike? Bill Gates. No. Um, Robbo? Yeah. Steve Jobs. Yes. Ah, damn it. I, I just remembered. Did and was majority shareholder up until 2006. Yeah. I knew it was one of those nerdy guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if this is going to be too hard or not, but I'm like, but I know Rob, so I know there's a yeah. chance Rob's point, I already know it. Yeah. Question two. Entangled. What is the name of Rapunzel's Charmeleon? Pascal. <laughs> oh, he's saying Pascal. He's saying Pascal. It's like it's close enough, right? <laughs> yeah. I will give that to you. I think yeah, it's close enough. And lastly, for the badly explained movie plot, mm -hmm. a house in London is broken into, and three children go away on an overnight trip. Robo. Rob. It's one of two movies. Peter Pan. Yes. 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 All right. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at Beneath the Castle. Uh, please go there and like and share with your friends. We post Disney news, Disney trailers, and all things Disney. And make sure you go there and leave us a comment. Uh, tell us what you like about the show and what you don't. And if there's any Disney movie you would like us to talk about, or you can contact us on beneaththecastle at gmail.com. But most importantly, please go to soundcloud.com slash beneaththecastle, or you can find us at Spotify, listen to the show, or you can go to the YouTube channel Beneath the Castle and look into our eyes as we talk about Disney. And why wouldn't you want to do that? I know, right? <laughs> She's got such beautiful blue eyes. All right, that's the end of the show. Thanks for listening, everyone, or listening or watching. And remember, grown old is mandatory, but growing up is optional. Goodbye. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> See you, guys. <laughs>